everyone, welcome back to episode 9 of Zero to CSWP. In this episode, we're going to start taking a look at the last segment of the CSWP exam, segment 3, which covers assemblies inside of SOLIDWORKS. Assemblies is really where SOLIDWORKS comes alive, allowing us to have multiple parts interact and move with each other. Before the video gets started, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button to be notified of any future videos that you want to see. And as well, download the parts with a link in the description. You're going to need them to follow along with the video. So, with that out of the way, let's just jump right into SOLIDWORKS. An assembly is basically just a file in which you can add parts or other assemblies, called subassemblies, and make them together using geometric relations. To make an assembly, instead of using the part button when making a new file, we can select an assembly file. Once we open this up, a property manager appears called the insert part property manager. When it is the first part in an assembly you're making, it is called the begin assembly property manager instead. If you downloaded the parts from the link in the description, we can start inserting them into our assembly. We can select browse and then find our parts and open them to insert them. I'll start with the part listed A1. Once it's imported, we can see it is listed in the feature manager design tree. The whole part's own design tree is embedded here if we ever need to access it to change things in the part without opening the part itself. Let's add the other parts and start making them together. I can add all three by highlighting them in the selection folder. If we try to do this to A1, it will not drag around as it was the first part added, which makes it fixed, meaning it cannot move. This is useful as it serves as an anchor point for our assembly. If we want to make this not fixed, or what is called floated in an assembly, we can right click the part and select float. On the other hand, if we want to fix any other parts in their position, we can right click and select fix. Let's open the mate property manager by selecting the mate button. Here we can see all of the mates we can apply between the parts. In this video, we're going to focus on the standard mates, but we will be covering more advanced and mechanical mates in the future. We can see the different mates we can use, coincident, parallel, perpendicular, tangent, concentric, lock, distance, and angle. We'll cover all of these in this video, but for now, let's look at concentric. If you remember back to sketching, the relation concentric made any two arcs, including circles, have the same center point. Mates are a lot like relations, just in three dimensions rather than two, and between different parts rather than sketch entities. The concentric mate will just make any two arc profiles, including faces that make arcs, such as these cylindrical cut sections of the part, concentric, or running along the same axes. Let's select this hole of A1 and this hole of A2 in the selection box, and then select the concentric mate to make them concentric. You'll notice that SOLIDWORKS automatically selected the mate for me, and it will usually do this, but if it selects a mate you do not want to use, you can simply just click the mate you need. The mate property manager stays open if we want to add any other mates to our part, but for now let's just close it to see what this has done to our parts we mated. We can see I can still drag A2, but now only around and along the axis created by the two holes. This means our first mate has done our job, because if we look normal to the holes, we see that they are lined up. We can do the same for A3 and A1. Now let's say we want the faces of A2 and A3 to line up with A1. In the real world, this would be accomplished by a series of bushings, screws, nuts, or maybe some other methods. But in this case, let's just keep it simple and use a coincident mate to make the faces line up. We can select the face of A1 and A2 we want to line up, then apply the coincident mate, and do the same with A1 and A3. Next, let's make A4 coincident to A3. With most mates, there are different orientations that a part could be. For example, the part can be on either side of the face, which is coincident to another part. We control this with the mate alignment options, either having parts aligned or anti-aligned. We can see the mate would work differently for A4 based on alignment. The part would be on either side, 
So if you ever need to flip a mate to make your part in the correct orientation or arrangement, this is the button to use. Then we can make the rest of our holes we need to line up with Coincentric to finish our four bar assembly. We can move around our assembly. And even for something so relatively simple, this is still so cool being able to see our parts move together like this. Let's take a look at the rest of the mates we can apply. First, parallel. This is exactly what it sounds like. It will make two faces parallel to each other. We can select the face A2 and A3 and select the parallel mate, making them parallel. We can see that the parts are now bounded and cannot move as they are all fully defined. Notice we can still drag parts while in the mate's property manager, which is useful for seeing what degree of freedom, such as translations or rotations, are fixed or not. In this case, everything is fixed and they cannot move, but in other cases, you'll be able to see them. If we want to edit our parallel mate to either change the selections or mate type, we can scroll down to the mates tab, which are mates created in this instance of the mate tool. We can then click the parallel mate to edit it. Instead of making these two faces parallel, let's say we want them angled to each other. We can select the angle mate and apply an angle of 5 degrees. Note that it is the angle between the faces, so we can swap which way the angle goes, either making them face apart or towards each other. Let's exit the mate property manager to see how else we can edit our mates. If we look in the feature manager design tree, we see a tab where we can view all of our mates. We can right click if we want to edit our mate or delete it. I'm going to delete the angle mate we made so we can take a look at some other mates we missed. Let's try out a perpendicular mate between A1 and A2. There's not much explaining needed for this mate, as it will make the entities perpendicular to each other much like the parallel mate makes the entities parallel. Instead, let's try deleting this mate and trying out the lock mate. First, let's move the part into a random position. Then, let's select Lock, and choose A1 and A3. This will lock the parts in relation to each other, as they were selected. Due to the assembly, this defines all of the other parts' positions, but it should be clear that only A1 and A3 have the lock mate. Let's delete that mate and lastly look at the distance mate. We can select these two cylindrical cuts on A1 and A4, and then select Distance Mate. For Distance Mate between circles, we can select it if it is between the centers, outside, or inside of the two circles. So, for our purposes, let's just select the center of the circles and assign a value of 2.75 inches. For things like distances between faces or lines, the selection for the center minimum or maximum of a circle will not be present. I know this has been a shorter video, but it should be a good introduction to assemblies and mating things together. Thanks for watching episode 9 of Zero to CSWP. I really hope you learned something and that you're better at making assemblies inside of SolidWorks. In the next episode, we're going to be taking a look at some more in-depth things such as more complex mates or other tools you can use to evaluate your assemblies such as interference or collision detection. So I'll see you in that video.